talk for us called Ideas to Action, a special presentation by our outgoing president, Katie Ward. She'll walk us through the many avenues available for members to bring your thoughts and ideas forward. We're gonna learn how to share our knowledge, bring your perspective to conversation, and get to know and work with the other members to make a difference as we work together. The presentation will aim to sketch out a map to the NFU structure and processes that will help you get involved in ways that work for you. Because we all know everybody has a different capacity for doing work for the, uh, for the National Farmers Union. So Katie, are you uh, on a, online? I am here. And I believe the texts have my uh, PowerPoint, so um, I'm happy to get started. Um, we can, thanks very much, Cam. Uh, we can go ahead to the second slide, actually. Um, so folks, um, thanks for um, making it back after lunch. Um, and I just wanted to give you a bit of a sort of explainer on, on where this workshop came from. I'd hoped it would be a bit more interactive, but uh, them's the breaks this time, I guess. Um, last year, I was asked to give a talk about how to, quote unquote, seize the moment. And that became the jumping off point for this discussion we're going to have in the next half hour. Um, I found it was a really interesting question because I honestly don't know that it's possible to answer that. It's really impossible to know um, without the benefit of hindsight what is that moment and uh, what is that tipping point that it takes to turn an idea into momentum so then I thought about what it is that we do in the NFU because we've sure had our share of galvanizing moments in our collective experience how did those other NFU members make that success happen from all the stories I've heard and the work that I've participated in it's really a combination of persuasiveness, getting your message to the right audience at the right time, endless repetition if necessary, some fun along the way, and determination to a level that some might even call stubbornness. But when you get down to it, this is a workshop on how to use the NFU to develop your skills and networks in order to accomplish your goals. I want you to leave here with the knowledge that you have the tools to take action, the name of hopefully at least one person who can help you access these tools and a few more connections with others in the room or on the Zoom. So fair warning to any members here who are already active on committees or working groups, I may be dropping names or calling on you uh, later to help newer NFU members put a face to the NFU in their area of interest. Um, I had hoped, but it's it's only a half hour, so I don't know that we're going to have time for um, too much discussion at the end. So we'll we'll see if we get there. Next slide, please. This slide is shamelessly stolen from the wonderful intermission slideshow that Ashley created that you've probably seen a few times already. Um, and that's my first tip or tangent for doing work in the NFU. Don't waste time reinventing the wheel. Um, <laughs> For instance, if you've seen a paper copy of our policy book, it's a bit of a doorstop. Um, the amount of thinking that's gone into 50 years on uh, the hollowing out of food sovereignty in this country is frankly astonishing. And you might wanna update things, but you might really find gems in there from the 1980s or the 1990s, even uh, the 60s or the 70s that still apply to farmland commodification or the concentration of seed and chemical companies or labor issues. So my pro tip for you right now is download that PDF from the link in your convention package and use the keyword search function. There's a lot of good information already. But back to business. This slide says currently active committees. If you don't see your cause, your problem, your issue reflected in this list, don't get discouraged. It's entirely possible that we already have the framework for a committee uh, or a working group about your cause or issue already on the books. It might need a revival because of recent events, or you might be considering a time-limited emergency and you'd rather create a temporary or ad hoc working group. So we're going to talk a bit more in depth later about what topics are currently being covered or within the mandate of all of these groups. But as we go forward, try to remember the first one that really caught your attention. And, um, you know, as a matter of fact, if you feel the 
the need, um, go ahead and write that down. Um, there should be a notepad on your table, I believe, and a, a pen um, or within your, your convention bag that you can use for that. Um, so yeah, just consider which of these uh, issues is, is maybe the, the top or most important issue to you um, and bear that in mind as you go forward because we're gonna consider that a bit of a seed and some of the information I'm about to give you will hopefully be the equivalent of water and nutrients to help it grow. So next slide, please. So there's a few sort of steps on the pathway to progressing your idea from idea into action. Um, you know, the core of an idea is, you know, we have this problem that we're encountering and um, we think that X, Y, or Z would be a good solution. Well, you, you know, are going to have conversations about that and brainstorm about, do you think that um, the solution I'm proposing is a good idea. Are there alternatives? Have, have things already been tried? Um, you know, do I need to reinvent the wheel or has the wheel not been invented yet in this particular instance? Um, next slide, please. And so this is where the asterisk comes in about NFU policy resolution. I hope I'm catching you in time with this tip because I believe there's still about an hour before the final deadline for resolutions. That therefore be it resolved in an NFU resolution really has to be about something that the NFU has the power or the scope to take action on. Um, and this is um, just an example, but um, you know, therefore be it resolved that the NFU enact legislation to save the whales is going to be rejected by the resolutions committee because it's out of order. We don't enact legislation. But something like, therefore be it resolved that the NFU advocate to all levels of government and the public for a uh, marine reserve to um, be established in order to promote and preserve aquatic biodiversity, that's definitely something that the NFU can do. And you're gonna get other members who are gonna care about that type of thing who will get on side with you. So the question once a resolution is passed is, how do you craft a strategy? What are the ideas that you're going to um, bring forward to put that strategy um, into action? And um, as you're holding those brainstorming sessions and crafting your strategy, bring a friend along who cares about it. If they're not an NFU member already, but they care about your issue, that's a great way to help build the movement that's going to help you take action on this. Next slide, please. There we go. So all of these um, quote unquote places, um, although some of them are happening virtually these days, are where you go physically or virtually to drum up support for your idea. If you can convince another, enough other NFU members to vote for your idea, then it automatically moves up the next rung in our democratic ladder. You've heard the saying that the personal is political. Well, the other NFU members in your local or district are the most geographically close to you, and they're going to be the most familiar with the municipal issues that you might be dealing with. Regional conventions are the place to talk about provincial or territorial issues, and that means that you also have a chance to elect your regional council to represent your views and needs to your provincial or territorial government. Policy committees and working groups tackle specific issues, and they're a good place to dip your toe into the NFU where you can accomplish some good work on an issue that you care about without perhaps taking the risk of being elected for a job because uh, let's face it, that's not cut out for everybody, but it's also um, maybe not as onerous as it sounds. You. Uh, um, you might have too much going on to commit to a job anyways, but you can still help by participating in a committee. And it's a great place to learn and listen to other people as well. Um, and of course, the National Convention is a great place to talk about issues that are interprovincial, national or international in scope. And you can also put your name forward for election if you think that your time and perspectives can contribute to achieving solutions. Most national board members have committees or issues that are of special interest to them, and they often steward work on policy resolutions that come out of national convention. 
but whether you're on the national board or not, here's the thing, you are the NFU. Um, this is a grassroots organization and the, that board member is probably gonna work on one of these committees or working groups to take action on your issues. And whatever seat at whatever table uh, appeals most to you, I hope that you will uh, will claim that seat for yourself uh, as a member of a committee or an elected official to, you know, take part in moving your ideas to action. Next slide, please. So if your local, your working group or committee has a member come to you with a solution for a problem that's already covered in the NFU policy book, a lot of your um, work is already done. You can, um, you can skip from the sort of convincing people stage into the how do we take action stage. And so these are some of the options that you have, um, but it's, it's sort of the next phase on the pathway. Op-eds and letters to the editor kind of sound a little bit boring, right? But they're designed to make the reader care about your problem and lead them to support the solution that you're proposing. So a letter to the editor is usually 250 or 300 words. It's totally doable. And probably all of the words that you need are already found in the whereas clauses that you're writing to your resolution to begin with. Other committee members, because you're not doing this alone, you're part of this movement, right? So other committee members will help you revise and refine your draft. We're very big on wordsmithing in the NFU, um, but there's a good reason for that. And it's a great way to learn. The NFU can help you get it to the right media outlet, the one that the politicians read, um, the ones whose attention you're trying to grab. So make sure to, you know, if you're if you're writing a letter to the editor, make mention of a workshop that your committee is holding and uh, you know, hopefully people will see that in your community paper and they'll come out to your meeting, again, building a movement. Um, next slide, please. So now I'm quickly, because I have about 10 minutes left, gonna run through a bit of an example with some visual cues for you. So NFU members especially have some great opportunities to find like-minded people who are happy to help you think through ideas that you might have for beneficial change. There's always someone willing to listen or who might perhaps suggest improvements or coach your efforts in advocacy. Um, the number of resolutions that I've written over people's tables over the years um, is, is pretty impressive. But if you can convince other NFU members, you've got that movement involved in helping you. And it's not just a local movement, it's a movement from coast to coast. Um, just as an example, if anybody in the room or on the Zoom can raise your hand right now, if you like to chat about farm policy during a coffee break at convention. <laughs> yeah, there's a few of you. Um, they're pretty easy to find. Uh, next slide, please. The amazing Bess Van Zandwick is a visual stand-in here, uh, but her picture is up there to represent a moment in time that changed a lot for the National Farmers Union. At the 2016 NFU National Convention, a young farmer from Vanskoy, Saskatchewan went to the microphone to speak passionately and logically in favor of a resolution calling on the NFU to sign on as an intervener in an upcoming Saskatchewan court case about the carbon levy that was expected to end up in the Supreme Court of Canada. The resolution passed, and the next few years became a real whirlwind of advocacy for large-scale change on a very public national stage. Next slide, please. And the NFU is home to some of the brightest agricultural climate and, uh, and climate policy minds in the country, both on staff and within our membership. So when we published the Tackling the Farm Crisis and the Climate Crisis report at a time when Many in the agricultural circles thought climate change was fighting words. Um, it really felt like quite a leap, but then it wasn't. And the science was well-researched, common sense on-farm logic was sound and relatable, and it happened to hit the media at that seize the moment time when the zeitgeist, the public perception had changed and climate denialism was kind of boring. Um, we offered a palatable, normal sounding solution and a plan. Um, so we started talking about positive actions and positive solutions. Next slide, please. The NFU has a long history of alliances and collaborations over a variety of campaigns over the decades, and it's a great way 
to build momentum once you're in uh, like there's always a bit of a lull that happens at different points in any kind of campaign. Um, so working on alliances and getting other groups to help amplify your message is a really good way to keep that momentum going once your seize the moment moment has passed. Next slide, please. So Farmers for Climate Solutions started with a small meeting of four groups in a boardroom uh, in a at the University of Man in I guess it was the University of Manitoba might have been the University of Winnipeg, um, following the interest generated by us signing on to this court case. And when we chose to do that, we were something novel in the Canadian landscape. We were farmers who publicly cared about the climate crisis. Next slide, please. We had key messages that uh, really resonated with farmers. Um, of course, another key message was that farmers were creaking and groaning under a mountainous load of debt from coast to coast. So we were pitching that government fund our adaptation and mitigation efforts. And that really appealed to the concept that farmers are contributing to the common good and part of a societal bargain. Um, and, and that helped to sort of, um, you know, soften the, the discussion a little bit. Next slide, please. So if you can put together a good PowerPoint, it can be used to speak to a multitude of groups. Um, it really doesn't hurt to have um, you know, the same PowerPoint presentation. If you're going to talk to a, a number of, of different types of groups, it actually really makes sure that you're carrying a common message um, and not, um, not getting off track. So you can make a two-page briefing sheet uh, you've been invited to talk to your local chapter of a university alumni association or a community association, the Council of Canadians. Um, the list is really endless, but you can use the same sort of presentation bones for all of them. Uh, use these opportunities to get signatures on petitions, spread handouts around with easy to read talking points. Um, I once did a presentation on our tackling the climate crisis report to uh, the Calgary chapter of the Council of Canadians in a pub, and I got one new NFU member signed up, a few new associate members, and about 40 signatures on a petition. Remember, this is all about movement building, right? So those extra names on that petition add up. Next slide, please. If you're going to do a talk to a community group like the Rotary Club or the Women's Institute, send out a press release. The office, uh, our staff, Lots of experienced NFU members can coach you through how to write a press release. Um, local radio stations especially love to interview people about events going on in their community, and they'll let you pitch the website and advertise your event so your message gets to more people. Next slide, please. So everyone's got a first time story for this one. Maybe you first met with a legislator or their staff decades ago, or maybe yours hasn't happened yet. It can sound intimidating, but when you're paired with a more experienced NFU member or part of a group or a team, it can be a great way to watch and learn how the lobbying process works. Uh, your local MP is the same person who showed up at that community association or barbecue uh, that you spoke to last month that's out there looking for votes. So you probably already know them a bit, right? And you know more about this issue than they do. So they're willing to listen to your um, experienced and, and somewhat at least expert opinion. Um, if you develop a subject matter expertise and some experience with the consultation process that all you know, federal and provincial legislation goes through, you might one day find yourself asked by the NFU to present or testify at a legislative hearing. Remember that resolution I mentioned back in 2016 about the federal carbon case? Glenn Wright, who I'm guessing is probably in the room, uh, probably never imagined when he wrote it that he would find himself testifying in 2022 about a proposed exemption for grain dryers that was politically destined to pass, but he managed to persuade the House of Commons Ag Committee to insert a sunset clause. So at least we can hold on to a pathway to make some of that potentially problematic legislation go away. Next slide, please. Uh, we're getting close to the end here. Another recent win that we had, um, beyond the many successes that are still flowing from NFU work on the climate file, 
was the $30 billion universal child care program that was announced in April 2021. Um, that was standing on the shoulders of decades of work that NFU members had done um, to, to advocate for the policy around universal child care, universal pharmacare. And it didn't take us long to draft up a press release when all of this started hitting the, the airwaves, but it caught the attention of government and um, you know maybe three hours of staff and volunteer time. When this uh, was actually finally passed in the budget, we had our press release out and up on social media within three or four hours of the budget. So um, we got contacted the very next day by Minister Bebo and had a meeting with her the, uh, I want to say within two days of the budget being passed. Um, that kind of feedback tells us that um, signaling support for positive action that helps achieve our goals really gets noticed. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but don't be afraid to use the work done by other NFU members in your own way at the right time to help bring their work to fruition. Next slide, please. <coughs> Pardon me. So now that you've got some ideas and even better, I like to think of them as tools to hatch a plot, um, you know, how to, how to take your idea through to action. Let's try to find the venues for you to activate those networks. So um, basically, if you have um, concerns about, I'm going to use this as an example, um, abattoir access, you're going to want to think about the, the livestock committee. Well, <clears throat> You can send an email to nfu at nfu.ca with livestock committee in the subject line and you'll get added to the Google group. And so you'll get notices when there's committee meetings, you can um, start to follow discussions that are happening online. <coughs> Pardon me, and I think I'm just about out of time. Um, so I will just say um, after today, um, somebody else will be at the president at nfu.ca email. So um, if you want to dig into how to how to get active on this, um, nfu at nfu.ca or, um, you know, feel free to reach out through your networks. Um, there's lots of folks that are happy to help find find the spot for you. Um, and so I'm, I guess I'll just leave it at that. Um, it can seem intimidating at first, but it doesn't have to be, and you'll make some great friends along the way. Um, so I'll just wrap up with that. And um, yeah, I hope you will use the NFU uh, to accomplish your goals. And um, that's the goals of other members too. That's why you all joined us to work together. So I hope that this was helpful. Thanks. Thank you, Katie. <clears throat> Well, it sounds like you're running out a little, running out of gas a little bit, Katie. Plus, we are out of time, so I will have to uh, just thank you very much for the presentation. I found it, even though I understood those things you're talking about, I still found it inspirational. So, thank you. And uh, Stuart, I would like to guess before I step aside, I'd like to uh, thank you on a personal level for all the work you've done over your years as president. You've done a, an incredible job. Thank you. And Stuart has some words to say on behalf of the organization. Well, thanks, Cam. I, um, I don't know if Cam is far enough away for me to take this mask off or not, uh, but um, I have a lot of difficulty wearing a mask and trying to speak at the same time. I, um, this is completely unscheduled in the, 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 the calendar of events and the agenda, but um, it's appropriate for the Farmers Union to say a thank you to Katie Ward for the years that she has spent as, uh, as our president. And um, Ashley, is Mara on the line? Yep. Okay. Um, Mara, I think we'll cut to you right away if uh, if that works, because Mara uh, Mara had sent a message, and I thought, well, why not just have Mara deliver deliver it herself? If she's going to stay up late in Paris, she might as well be on the line. So go ahead, Mara. 
Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, anytime I get a chance to thank Katie, uh, it's always a pleasure. Um, Katie, I just, uh, on behalf of the staff, and I, I think I can speak on behalf of the, of the leadership of the NFU, you are exactly the leader that the NFU needed for these times. Four years of leading through a pandemic, supply chain issues, meetings with Bebo, wildfires, floods, farm loss, misinformation campaigns and corporate chicanery. You embraced the massive changes in the farm sector and in the NFU, and you leaned into them. You led with patience, determination, and humor, encouraging collegiality during the isolation of COVID and resolute collectivism against the corporate call for individuation. It has been such a true joy to work with you and to learn from you. You were reliable, and I am so thankful for, to you for that. You are selfless, intelligent, and kind. You allowed me to learn on the job while we reached for more than we thought was possible. And we've started down the road and realizing the vision through our strategic plan. Thank you for your leadership. I know you are looking forward to catching up on your farm after four years. And as you fix that fence and replace that leaky tap, all of which are important to our food system, May you always also remember that you've done something truly, truly transformative in your life. You have led the NFU with clarity and determination. I will miss you, but will hold you close in my heart with gratitude. Thank you, Katie.